Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Towards Libraries Toolkit and Broadband Improvement Plan. I'm Carson Block, and with me is Stephanie Stenberg. Hello. Um, we are going to uh, go as quick as we can, and we want to um, uh, uh, thank SJSU so much for the School of Information, so much for uh, allowing us to share about this exciting proje uh, project that we have. We're going to start, though, with introductions about um, uh, us. Stephanie, tell us about your wonderful work that you do with Internet2. Well, I am the director of the Internet2 Community Anchor Program, and I know everyone's saying Internet2, so I'll tell you what it does. Internet2 is a national nonprofit research and education network that was founded by the nation's higher education institutions in 1996. So it is a big national network of fiber that runs across the nation. Um, at the Community Anchor Program, I work with 46 different state networks that connect to that Internet2 network. They're called state and regional research and education networks, and they connect over 80,000 community anchor institutions. So about 50% of the K-12 schools, for example, and 20% of the public library. Carson, tell us a little bit about yourself. I will. I'm Carson Block. I'm a library technology consultant now, but I've been working with library technology since the web just got its start in libraries. So I've been um, doing this for about 25 years. I've been an independent consultant for 10 years, but before that, I've worked in a variety of, uh, of libraries as a, like a technology leader, basically throughout all of these things and, and through regional library uh, services. Um, and the reason I am a consultant now is I believe in the power of libraries to change lives. Like, for real, I believe in this, and and I know that technology holds us back often. Uh, so if you check me out online, you'll see that the only thing that everything I do has in common is at the core, I'm helping people help other people in their communities. We also want to thank Mr. James Neal uh, from the IMLS, one of the reasons uh, that we're here, and our um, our program officer for our grant. Take it, Stephanie. Yes, so we are here to talk to you about. Um, the Toward Gigabit Libraries Toolkit and Broadband Improvement Plan. This is a free downloadable tool that can help libraries learn about and improve your broadband infrastructure and your IT environment. So it is a printable toolkit. It's over 60 pages long. You can print it out, walk around the library with it. And what's great is it's a Word document, so you can put everything in there. You can remix it. And um, while Carson tells you a little more about our grants, I'll put the link in the chat for everyone. Be sure to grab the toolkit because sometimes people say after they've gone through it at their library, they say, can I use this at home? I'm having trouble. The short answer is yes, you can actually use it anywhere. Uh, but we'll give you a little background. Um, in 2015, um, uh, IMLS awarded uh, our team uh, this two-year grant to develop training curriculum and self-assessment material, the toolkit, uh, for library broadband infrastructure. Uh, our target was rural and tribal libraries. Uh, we had partners, of course, across the U.S., including state library offices and what are called research and education networks. Internet 2 is, is, is one of the big anchors for that, but there's also um, smaller regional statewide sorts of uh, R&E networks. That's research and educational networks. Work. Uh, the initial goal that we had was to pilot the toolkit in at least 30 libraries. Well, we got out to almost 60, uh, which was just uh, j just amazing. And uh, the, the project in a nutshell has uh, uh, been successful and it's done a lot of good uh, throughout the country. So in 2020, uh, we were awarded a second grant called the Gigabit Libraries and Beyond Grant. And this is uh, designed to scale up the reach and the effectiveness of the toolkit, as well as uh, do some more tribal library visits and um, reach into some new areas such as urban technology deserts. So um, we're going to give you now a little overview of what the toolkit actually is. We know everyone's downloaded it, you're opening it up and looking at it, so just, you know, <laughs> keep doing that and we will tell you a little bit about that. Also, um, these links uh, for everything we're talking about uh, today, uh, the links that you see here, we'll make these slides available after our presentation. Uh, this has everything uh, uh, that you need. And there's a little explainer video too on uh, YouTube, uh, which is really helpful in understanding the toolkit. 
Definitely. So the toolkit actually has three functions. It functions as an educational workbook. So it's not just fill in the blank. If you're looking at it, you can tell it's learn as you go. It's also a self-assessment tool. So you can really build out the picture of your IT infrastructure and broadband capabilities step by step that, you know, it's really geared towards lay people, which, you know, non-techies, that's our target audience. And lastly, it's you can use it as an advocacy platform because it gives you the information and tools you need to enact change for your library. So um, just the pro you'll see a little on the arrows at the bottom, that was the process um, for making the toolkit. The toolkit is really the heart and soul of the project. It's not an exhaustive resource, but it, it, it focuses on a little more high level aspects, but it's at the layperson level, like I said. So um, our hope is that it's a standalone document that anyone who works at the library, volunteers, anyone can use to learn more about your broadband infrastructure. You don't necessarily need a tech advisor or an IT person on staff, which a lot of libraries don't, to complete the toolkit. And, you know, to, to kind of like, you know, spoiler alert, it actually works. It is for anyone, just as uh, Stephanie said. Now, the, the toolkit approach is laid out in a very intuitive uh, way. So the basic format is that we start with a question, like a key question um, for um, uh, some area of technology. We'll go over the sections in just a second followed by a resource that helps answer the question. So you have the question, you've got the way to answer the question next, and it really uh, helps quite a, a bit. Um, I wanted to tell you too that during the initial two-year grant, the toolkit was piloted in, in those 60 rural and tribal libraries across the U.S. And part of that, we leveraged a technical advisor from the broader Internet2 research and education community or other technical partners to help walk the library through the toolkit kit process. So our goal after using the assessment tool uh, was to conduct a broadband library checkup. Um, and uh, the toolkit provides this guide whether you have technical information or not. So you can be someone knowledgeable using the toolkit, uh, but you don't have to be. And often bringing people together in this way uh, around these very sound technical assessment and suggestions for improvement um, things were a great way to create and open up a dialogue between uh, IT people when their IT people were available and library people who had no technical expertise. Um, it was a it ended up being like a like a partner. The toolkit's kind of like a partner for folks being involved in this. Uh, and there's many ways that you can use the toolkit. You can uh, create a shareable snapshot of your library's IT and broadband infrastructure. This is very important. A lot of IT people forget or don't have the time to document things, and this is a a, a guide to just documenting the the, the basics and essentials. Uh, it can help prepare for e-rate requests and budget cycles. It helps open communication between libraries staff and technology workers. It also will help you address specific problems in your library. Just by completing specific sections, you will know things that need to be uh, addressed and you'll be able to do something about it. And it can also get a baseline for proposed IT and broadband improvements. And uh, we'll say it once, we'll say it twice, or maybe three or four times. The best part of this is that you do not need to be a techie, a technician, an IT person to use this. This is completely focused on plain language uh, technology concepts that anyone can use. So now we're going to take you through the toolkit sections. And I will say that these are the sections of the toolkit as it exists right now. We are actually actively working on updating the toolkit and we expect it to be released sometime in 2022. Um, so brand new and improved and updated with some new sections involved. But right now, if you're printing out the toolkit to use in your library, which you absolutely can, this, these are the sections that we have. So the first section actually helps you take a technology inventory of your library. So we're talking about your broadband connection, thinking about your wireless network. Um, it's a space to put down your connections, download and upload speeds. And so there's also some resources um, um, there are some speed tests, and then there are resources to help you understand what, what the speed tests even mean. You're going to learn about latency, which, which is just another word for delay, um, jitter, which is more like network congestion. So if your network's a road, jitter is the traffic uh, you're, ex you're experiencing, and then packet loss, which would be errors in data transmission. So all those things help um, combine to make your broadband fast or slow. 
That's right. Everything uh, uh, counts there. Um, the next section is, is around broadband services and activities. And this really asks the questions, what would you do if you weren't constrained by broadband limitations, right? It's, it helps explore and, and help everyone understand the why we have um, a connectivity in our libraries. I know that most of us take that for granted, but it's very helpful to think about the impact that we have when we have great connectivity. We can contribute uh, to our, our communities by providing distance learning, by uh, virtual field trips and events, online job training, um, uh, assistance for anything that's uh, technology driven within the library. Naming these things is so important as we uh, speak to others about our library services and it shows how important the library is as a community anchor institution. The next section focuses on broadband technical operational support. So this is, you know, what are your technical resources in your library? Do you even have access to IT staff or, you know, what, what does that look like for you? So do you have any training resources? It's also about, you know, who's your broadband provider? How do they, how well do they respond to your requests? And what, even just what does your broadband contract look like? You know, you're running the library. It's, it gives you a moment to step back and look at actually what your provider is promising you and how much you're paying for it. In some cases, um, uh, uh, folks didn't even realize they had a contract that uh, specified uh, the sort of services and performances that they are performance that they could expect from their internet service providers. So just knowing that uh, these things exist and that you can read them, they're not too hard to read and understand, is really helpful. Um, broadband funding, I think one of the top things we see across the country when, when folks ask, what are the barriers to providing better technology or better library services in general? It, it, funding always comes up as a top issue. And so uh, in, in this section, uh, this helps really tear apart like how much the services are costs, uh, the, the total cost of ownership for technology, uh, service costs, if there's any device rental taxes, um, uh, talking about E-rate. Now we don't take a stand on E-rate within this document because this is not a, this is not a political document. This is a, a, uh, a document to learn and to know, but we want people to actually understand and, and understand their own reasons for either participating in the federal E-rate program or not participating. Uh, also suggestions for other funding resources like state, local, and private grants. And of course, there's a lot of energy right now um, uh, around funding uh, due to uh, the American Recovery Act and CARES Act and things like that. Uh, and also links to funding opportunities and other uh, ideas. And, and the whole thing here is to give everyone a fighting chance to really understand what options that they have to be able to pursue. Because one thing that happens after you do this assessment, you realize that you need stuff. Uh, most libraries realize they need something, either uh, more equipment, more services, or just updated things, modest things. And so uh, this gives a place for folks to go. And we had a great question in the chat from Carol at Bloomfield Public okay. Library. She said, is it possible to contact the participants in today's workshop once the updated version of the toolkit is available? And we are able to, if you email me, um, I will put you on our list to receive updates about the toolkit. It won't be you know, there's not going to be anything in your inbox all the time. It really will be just really meaningful updates and um, a notice when the updated toolkit is available for everyone. So please uh, send that to my email address uh, if you're interested. So um, we also have a, an additional resources and best practices section. And so it, you know, more, even more um, resources. There were some peppered throughout, but, but more, more deep dives on E-rate content filtering. Internet use policies are always a big thing. And just free tech training and resources. And this is really just a one-stop shop for learning more about things um, that can help make your library operate better when it comes to broadband and IT things. In the last section, uh, we were talking about how this toolkit helps um, techies and non-techies communicate. So of course it has a glossary. It's a, it's a handy glossary for the quick lookup of common technical terms so that if they come up in a conversation, you have a way to, to kind of look them up really quick. Uh, things, uh, words, these may be very familiar to you or they might be complete gibberish ethernet, 
firewall, latency, router, wireless access point, or WAP. Um, and we're look at, also looking to improve this section as well, um, fleshing out a little bit more uh, with uh, pictures, for instance, and even more definitions that will be helpful to folks. All right, so I know you none of you have probably done the toolkit yet, but in our experience, these are the common issues that people have run into. So if any of these resonate with you, or if you have a different thing that you're running into in your library, please put it in the chat. Let us know what you're struggling with um, and what is important at your library, if you're comfortable sharing that. But insufficient bandwidth, obviously a problem for a lot of things. Da data wiring, Carson, I don't know if you want to say a little more about data wiring because it's uh, so important. Absolutely. So a lot of people don't think about, you know, especially today, if, you, if you've grown up with a wireless device and, and your connection to the internet has no wire involved, you may not know that we need to have actually a lot of copper wire within buildings even to provide wireless services. And so in some cases, uh, the, the, the data wiring within libraries, especially ones, um, um, well, like lots of them, unless they were built in the last five years, there's probably something a little challenging within that data wiring, including using the wrong sort of wire to be able to have high performance and, and uh, reliable service. Yes. And I see some people are putting in the chat, um, you know, all of the above seem like issues. Um, that's often the case. Um, sometimes you're able to home in on one specific issue as well. Um, Denise asked, can this information be relevant to Canadian libraries? That's a very interesting timing of that question. Carson and I actually presented on Tuesday to the American Library Association, ISLD, it's the international section of the um, ALA. And we actually started the conversation about how this could be adapted to libraries outside of the United States. So I would encourage you to um, check that out. They're going to be posting the recording there. And um, we are actually having an interactive workshop for international libraries coming in January. Um, so, in, so in a word, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, and, and this will, it also applies to even, even to your home network setup. I think Stephanie, you said you were, you were using it to do a little troubleshooting, um, uh, fairly recently. So yes, um, this is, uh, this is how it's designed because all these concepts actually, they work on the very small level as well as the very complex level. And it helps get, uh, give a really good understanding uh, of that. The, the next thing that comes from, um, uh, that, that, that came in the toolkit process is once you know that there's some problems, you don't wanna just be sitting there like, what do I do? Um, our next step is to create this thing called the Broadband Improvement Plan. And it's just really a simple document that breaks down uh, short-term actions and long-term actions that will help improve the connectivity. So in this example that you can see, uh, sometimes it's something simple like moving the Wi-Fi uh, access point, the router from the back of a library into the center of the library or the front to eliminate dead spots that were experienced um, or um, putting in more uh, a cabling so that we can move things uh, and that would be things we want to do in the short term in a long-term sense we might want to look at things like uh, contracting for additional broadband capacity increasing the speed if that's available uh, in the area or even applying for e-rate to help cover for those costs so this is the the way to kind of capture the things that that you're finding as a result of doing the toolkit and putting them in some sort of order that you can actually do something about them. Yes, and so then we didn't want to leave you empty handed. I know now you're like, oh, I have to go print out this huge toolkit. Will it even help me? The biggest uh, hurdle to doing the toolkit is just cracking it open. Yeah. So we want to show you some tips and takeaways that apply to um, your everyday life that you can, you know, look at these slides when we're done and make changes or get an assessment right now. So the first one is conducting a speed test. So we have a link for two different speed tests that you can run to really get an understanding of what's going on with your internet. I actually ran these from my home into two different times. And so as you can see, the upload and download speeds are different even when I did them back to back. So. That's kind of interesting. It's not because they were different tests, just because they were taken at different times. Um, and you know what's interesting is I remember running these tests because I was having a problem with my 
internet when I was doing Zoom meetings, which, you know, we all live on Zoom now, or I do at least. And um, it ended up being, I needed to update the firmware in my router. Um, so, you know, that's like a step that the toolkit would help me think through um, before I just thought it was a connectivity problem. It was actually my router needed to be updated and I just could go online and do that. So just an interesting way to think about it and use the, the toolkit. Good job, Stephanie. That is great. A uh, great example of, of troubleshooting and being able to, to round things up. You might ask, why do why are you suggesting that we go to a couple of different places to do a speed test? Well, and, and this we also have a worksheet for recording this um, because typically what we see if we don't have the technical information to um, to diagnose something, we'll just say something like the Internet's not working or the Internet's slow. The best way to demonstrate what slow means is to actually measure it at consistent times. And, and we recommend doing this for most uh, libraries first thing in the morning when we're, you're reasonably sure there's not a lot of traffic on the, the library's network connection and uh, using a wired connection. Uh, sometimes Wi-Fi, but using a wired connection, test uh, within these two different services and test it over a period of two, three, four, five days and see what sort of patterns that you see during these tests. If you're seeing that there, it's an anomaly, like sometimes it's not working, but it's working most of the time, that means one thing. But if you see a pattern of poor performance, then you will be able to use this documentation to work with your internet service provider to say, hey, I'm having a problem. Yes, it's slow, but we've been doing some data collection and we would like your help in solving this problem. For, uh, for instance, uh, we're buying a 20 megabit connection from you and when we measure, when we know that there's no one else on, the, on our network, our performance is five megabit. And so can you help us fix this problem? Um, our technical people love me. I love getting information and data. And especially when you do the work here and you're talking the same language, you can really um, be powerfully uh, solving problems. Carson, Another can I just share a quick story about yeah, yeah, yeah. Please running do. the speed test? Yeah. Just in the, because I've been plagued with internet problems uh, this year. <laughs> I actually Yuck. thought... At first I thought, oh my gosh, maybe I'm having Zoom problems because the internet is just getting really clogged right at 2 p.m. or when I'm trying to have these meetings. And I ended up taking a bunch of different measurements using um, speedtest.net. And I realized, no, my internet is only showing 11 megabits per second when I am paying for up to 200. Ah. So what is going on? It prompted me to call Comcast. Good. Good. And it turned out, that they had stopped servicing the router, or I'm sorry, the um, yeah, the router that I uh, had purchased. It had yes. gone become obsolete, and because of that, my internet speed was very, very low compared to what I was paying for. And wow. so that, you know, taking those speed test measurements made me realize it's not just clogged internet. It's actually a problem. I need to get in contact with my provider. So just you know, things like that really um, help you connect the broadband and the um, IT equipment. Outstanding. That's a that's such a great example. Um, I also, uh, we are at the five minute warning mark. So I'm going to work in a question really quick uh, from Ellie. Um, does a toolkit get into the last mile challenges? How can libraries move from a last mile consumer to a tier three provider moving into a sustainable future? We'll take the first part of that question. The second part is our daily obsession. Um, but the first part is that this is not a last mile uh, diagnosis. While we haven't solved the last mile problem um, uh, in, in the world, uh, not let alone the United States, let alone for rural and tribal areas, uh, this is the this toolkit is dedicated to something that gets no attention, which is the last hundred meters. That's the the, the length of the the uh, functional length of Ethernet cabling within a library. A, a lot of times, uh, our bottleneck, as, as Stephanie um, was talking about in her example, uh, often um, uh, there, there are problems there, but but uh, in that last mile, but sometimes there are horrible conditions within a library that contribute to poor performance of the network that have nothing to do with those other things. So your, your question is really great, uh, but this toolkit is specifically not for that last mile problem, which is huge, but for those things that are right within the facility um, and um, uh, helping uh, improve, of course, uh, better connectivity.
Um, I'll go through these really quick because we do need to wrap up in just a couple of minutes. We want to let people get to their next session. Um, uh, we uh, show people how to use a Wi-Fi stumbler, which is a way to make those invisible Wi-Fi networks visible. And then you see sometimes uh, these not, these networks are conflicting with each other and they can provide or, or they can cause uh, performance uh, problems. Uh, we also teach people in the toolkit how to draw their own network diagram. This is the single most important powerful tool that you have at your disposal to understand how um, uh, how to correct issues in your network. And everyone, we've proven this over and over and over again, everyone can draw their own simple network diagram. And if they understand this key concept that your network can only be as fast as the slowest link in the chain, then you understand how data networks work in their, their core, and you can do something to improve your internet connectivity. Uh, we have some next steps coming up. Stephanie, take it. Yep, so we are just working, working, working to update the toolkit. We're adding some sections to help with um, community support and advocacy. We're also working um, to improve outreach to tribal, rural, and urban libraries, and building those partnerships between the research and education networks and state libraries to help libraries. And then we're gonna be putting on some train the trainer seminars to support libraries interested in completing the toolkit. So stay in touch. If you think this is something cool, you want to know more about it, uh, like Stephanie said, uh, any any uh, emails you share with us, you're not going to get spammed. We'll just um, we'll just make sure that you're connected to what you would like. Um, look at the links uh, that we have in the in the chat. Um, mainly um, get a hold of Stephanie if you want to stay connected. But if you want to get started, just download that toolkit, crack it open and take a look at it. Thank you so much for having us. Um, let us know if you have any follow-up questions and hopefully you can download the toolkit and get started today. That's right. And we have two minutes to spare. So that's great. We, <laughs> we've hit our mark with time. So folks can bail if they need to. If you have more questions, we're right here and we are um, very happy to answer any questions uh, that folks have. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's so awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna blaze through the names and see if I recognize anybody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Brett. Oh, I like Ellie's uh, avatar. Very nice. Cool. And I will. Thank you, Betsy and Darlita. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Yeah. Anna, thank you.